Today we'll be covering the doubly linked list. This will be an extension of our previous episode covering the linked list, and so watching that video is highly recommended before continuing on. The card in the top right corner, or the link in the description below, will both take you to that video so you can catch up. Then, once you're done there, you can rejoin us here for today's discussion. Alright, so just as a review, last week we talked about the linked list, a sequential access linear data structure which uses nodes as its form of storing information. Each node is an object consisting of both data, or the actual information we're storing in the linked list, and a pointer, which takes the computer to the next node in the list. These pointers allow us to easily shift each node around, adding or removing it without having to move mass amounts of data like we would have to do in the case of an array or some other data structure. This does come with one big drawback, however. With a normal linked list, we can only ever go forward with our pointers, never backwards. From the computer's eyes, once we follow a pointer to a certain node, there's no way to undo or go back to the previous one. Much like a shark, we can and will only ever go forward with regular linked lists. Now, if only there was a data structure which functioned similarly to a linked list, but instead of going forward, it allowed you to go backwards as well. That would be outstanding and would probably revolutionize the computer science industry. Oh well, maybe in the future. That's all for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. These videos- I'm joking, of course. This mythical data structure does exist, and it's known as the doubly linked list, which coincidentally is the title of this video. Small world. All jokes aside, today we're going to be covering the doubly linked list. We'll start off with some background information, dive into a visualization of how they're actually set up, go over adding and removing nodes from them, and then finally talk about some common uses for them in the real world. There will be no time complexity equations today, because they're going to be exactly the same as they were for a regular linked list, and for the exact same reasons, so there's no need to beat a dead horse. Alright, as always, the timestamps on your screen now will take you to when we discuss each of these topics, and any and all sources used to write this episode will be in the description. Now, enough housekeeping, let's get into the big question. What exactly is a doubly linked list? Well, a doubly linked list is almost exactly the same as a linked list except for one small difference. With a doubly linked list, we're able to traverse both forwards and backwards using the pointers. With a regular linked list, each element was a node, composed of both a data section and then a pointer, which would take you to the next node in the list. Using this, we were able to traverse a linked list easily to search for information, access data within a linked list, or add and remove notes from within the list with ease. A doubly linked list simply builds upon this idea by also having a pointer which points to the previous node in the linked list. It's a go backwards button of sorts, which allows you to fluidly go through the linked list in either direction, instead of just limiting yourself to one. This is great since it allows us to jump around the linked list and have a little bit more flexibility when it comes to working with information. Now just like a linked list, every doubly linked list is going to start with a head node. Since it's the first node in the list, both its previous pointer and its next pointer will point towards a null value. This is of course because it can't point to information which isn't there. We can fix this though by adding another node. Once we do, you can see that a few things have changed. The head node's next pointer now points towards this new node instead of null. The new node's previous pointer now points to the head node. And the new node's next pointer now points towards a null value. As you can see, it's a little bit more complicated than adding a node to a regular linked list in which we only have to worry about one set of pointers as opposed to two, but it still is manageable. Let's add one more node for demonstration purposes and you'll see the same thing happens. The second node now points to this new third node, and this third node gets initialized with a pointer which points both to the previous second node and also forward to some null value. You can see that with any two nodes, the next pointer of the first and the previous pointer of the second come together to form sort of a cyclical connection which ties the two nodes together. Then, at the head and tail of each list, there's a connection which ties them both towards some null value. Most of this should be common sense, but it's still good to go over. Hopefully, now you can see that doubly linked lists aren't as scary as maybe you initially thought. They're just an evolved form of the linked list. Now up next we're going to talk about adding and removing nodes from a linked list, again using the three methods we talked about in our previous segment. Because this can get very confusing very quickly, I want to use some lingo to help consolidate the terminology that I'll be using. When I refer to a node's next, I'm referring to that particular node's pointer which points to the next object in the list, whether that be another node or a null value. Similarly, 
When I refer to a node's previous, abbreviated to prev on the visuals, I'm talking about its pointer which points to the previous object in the linked list. Again, either another node or a null value. Doing this just helps keep things simple, because as you'll see, adding and removing nodes with two pointers instead of one is going to be a little bit more complicated. I've also set up a basic doubly linked list with three nodes containing three strings to help us out with this segment. Finally, just like last episode, the green on top of a node signifies that it's the head node, and the red signifies that it's the tail node. Alright, let's get into it. Like I said, we can add and remove nodes from the head, the middle, or the tail of the list, and we're going to be covering all six today, starting with adding a node to the head of a doubly linked list. Now adding to the head of a doubly linked list is quite simple. The first step is to take our new node that we want to insert, and set its previous to null, and its next to point towards the current head of the linked list. Then, all we do is set the current head's previous to point towards this new node instead of a null value, and we're set to go. Doing this rearranges the pointers in such a way that this new node becomes the head of the linked list. Pretty simple. So if we wanted a new node with the string abe to be the head of our linked list, we would follow these steps. First, we'd set the abe node's next to point towards the atom node, and its previous to point towards a null value. Then, by setting the atom node's previous to point towards the abe node, we have successfully added that node to the head of the list and given it the title of head node. For removing, it's even simpler. We set the head node's next to point towards a null value. Then, by setting the second node's previous to also point towards a null value, we can remove the head node from the list. This is how it would look in our example. We'd first set the abe node's next to null, then, we would set the Atom node's previous to also be null. Now, because the Abe node doesn't have anything to point towards, nor does it have anything pointing towards it, it will be deleted from the list. The Atom node will regain its position at the head, and the program will carry on. Up next is inserting and deleting from the middle of a doubly linked list, and this is where things get tricky. For inserting, this is going to be a three-step process. The first step is to set the new node's previous to point towards the node previous to the position you want to insert at. Then you set the new node's next to point towards the node after the position you want to insert at. Finally, you set the next on the node before the one you're inserting, and the previous on the node after the one you're inserting, to both point towards the new node. That is a lot of words, some of which might not even make sense to you, so let's use our example. Let's take a new node with a string Chris and insert it between the Adam node and the Ben node. Alright, let's just follow our steps. First, we want to set the new node's previous to point towards the node previous to the position we want to insert at. This means setting the Chris node's previous to point towards Adam. Then, we set the new node's next to point towards the node after the position we want to insert at. This entails setting the Chris node's next to be pointing towards Ben. Then, the last step is to set the next on the node before we're inserting, and the previous on the node after we're inserting, to both point towards the new node. So in this case, the Adam node's next, and the Ben node's previous, both get set to this new Chris node. Obviously a little bit more complicated than inserting or deleting from the head, but once we do this, you can see we've inserted the node into its rightful place. It might be hard to see because the pointers are a little bit messy, but the flow of the linked list has remained constant. Removing from the middle of the list is also a three-step process. First, we set the node before the one we want to remove next to point towards the node after the one we want to remove. Then, we set the node after the one we want to remove previous to point towards the node before the one we want to remove. And then finally, we set both the previous and the next of the node we're removing to be towards a null value. Again, a little complicated, so let's just take it to our example. Let's delete the Chris node just for the sake of keeping things consistent. First, we set the next of the node before the one we want to remove to point towards the node after the one we want to remove. So in this case, we set the Adam node's next to point towards the Ben node. Okay, then we simply set the previous of the node after the one we want to remove to point towards the node before the one we want to remove. So we'd set the Ben node to point towards the Adam node. Finally, we have to set the Chris node's pointers to point towards null values. And now again, because no nodes point towards it, and it doesn't point towards any nodes, the Chris node is essentially deleted. The list is back to its original form, and we're ready to talk about the last method of insertion and deletion, adding and removing from the tail. 
Now adding a node to the tail of a linked list is also a three-step process. Step one entails setting the next pointer of the current tail to point towards the new node we want to become the tail. Step two is setting the previous of the new node that we're adding to be pointing towards the current tail. And step three is making the new node's next point towards a null value. Again, let's do another example where we want to add a new node containing the string Ethan at the end of the doubly linked list. Following our steps, first we set the next pointer of the current tail, Carl, to point towards the Ethan node. Then, all we have to do is make the Ethan node's previous point towards Carl, and its next to point towards a null value, and we're all set. Ethan has been successfully added as the new tail of the list in three quick and easy steps. But, just as fast as he was added, Ethan is going to be removed, because now we're going to talk about removing it from the tail of the list. And this one only requires two steps. First, we set the tail nodes previous to point towards null, and then we set the second to last nodes next to also point towards null. On our list, it looks like this. First, we set the Ethan nodes previous to point towards null. Then we set the Carl nodes next to also point towards null. This deletes the Ethan node from the list and makes the Carl node, once again, the tail. Now, adding and removing from doubly linked lists might sound like a hassle. But remember, we only have to code these functions once, and then we can use them an infinite amount of times. Okay, so finally I just want to talk about some uses for a doubly linked list, because there are a ton. The back and forth functionality of a doubly linked list lends itself to be implemented in a lot of stack-like functionality, i.e. browser caches which allow you to go back and forth between web pages, the undo-redo functionality in many programs, applications which allow an open recent functionality, the list goes on and on. Linked lists and their evolved form in the doubly linked list are a great way to store information because of their nodal structure. Since we're not working with raw information in primitive types and we're storing all information inside of a shell, it makes it a lot easier to move around information. This, combined with the pointer system, allows for non-contiguous but still fast operating speed, making these two data structures a staple in computer science. All right, and with that, we are done all of the basic data structures, if you will. Next week, we'll start diving into the more advanced, juicy data structures, which are specialized for specific purposes. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. These videos can sometimes take quite a while to research, script out, and create visuals for, not to mention the audio recording and editing process. In total, these episodes can take up to 12 hours start to finish, so we appreciate you sticking around to the end. If you like this type of content and want it delivered to your subscription box free of charge, click the link on the right of your screen now to subscribe to the channel. As an added bonus, if you click the bell next to the subscribe button, we'll tell the big ups at YouTube to notify you when a new video is uploaded for no additional fee. And if you can't wait that long and are craving more of my melodic voice, you can click the playlist on the left of your screen now, which will take you to a playlist containing more programming fun. Until next time, peace.